But, um, you know, we, we writers are a masochistic lot. Um, writing is, is so hard and so painful in so many different ways, and yet we keep on coming back for more. And as we should, which is the point of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so I'm going to sort of take Sophie and Larry the Cable Guy and Journey, and, and we're all going to get together, and we're going to be your cheerleaders today. That's my job. Um, and I'm going to talk about the ways that I keep myself motivated, that I maintain my own momentum, and I'm hoping that's going to be helpful for you guys. How do I keep my butt in, in my chair? And that's the last time I'll, I'll be doing that, everybody. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start off just by uh, talking about how I got rolling with my career. Um, I knew at some point, oh golly, it must have been like 15 years ago, that um, I could not die a happy man unless I was a published author. So, goal set. But <laughs> that's a pretty big goal when you're starting out. Um, and I didn't feel ready to just swing for the fences like that. I, I wanted to lay down some good bunts. Hey, I made a sports metaphor. Wow, I know nothing about sports. So, hey, I'm proud of myself. I was going to lay down some good bunts. Maybe hit a single or two. So, um, what I set out to do was, was set smaller goals for myself to start with. So instead of saying, I'm going to sit down and, you know, over the weekend write the great American novel, and then next week I'll get an agent and uh, pick up my Pulitzer next Tuesday, um, I said, I am going to start with short fiction. I'm going to focus on short stories because I, I just don't feel like I've got the skills yet. Uh, I don't have the, any connections. Um, and I just don't have the confidence uh, to try this book thing. And so that's what I did. I started off writing uh, short stories. And, you know, for, for those of you out there who write uh, nonfiction and you're thinking, Hawkinsmith, talk to me, you know, dude, don't leave me out. Okay, okay, I haven't forgotten you. Um, I also have a journalism background, and so I also was doing a lot of freelance work. Uh, and, you know, there are always people out there looking for content, good, cheap content. So if you can deliver that, you're going to find somebody. The good and the cheap, they, they, that's, that's really important in the beginning. Uh, the cheap hopefully falls away with time. Um, but there are always editors out there looking for stuff. And it can be a newspaper, uh, although decreasingly so, sadly. Uh, alternative weeklies, nowadays a lot, of, a lot of websites looking for content. Um, and so there's, there's always opportunities. For you folks out there who are poets, I guess I have left you out, um, but, um, but you know, you're doing Twitter. So Twitter, start with Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. Twitter's a fine place. There you go, so the first Twitter poet. Uh, I think he calls out the Twitter haiku. Um, so I started small, and um, what wasn't so small in the beginning was my stack of rejection letters. Uh, I, I, well, I still have them all, by the way. Uh, I haven't had heart to go back and look at them, but uh, I keep them for some strange reason. Um, so, you know, I got a lot of those things, but before too long, the rejections turned into letters of encouragement. And then after a while, the letters of encouragement turned into acceptances. Um, and, you know, once I had enough of those acceptances, then I finally felt like I paid some kind of dues, and I was ready. I, I built up the skills, I, I proved to myself that I, could, that I could make some progress in this field. And so once I had that going for me, I decided, okay, now I'm going to try a book. Now, how many people in this room, I know, I know your answer, how many people in this room have finished a book? And I mean, not reading, but writing a book. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, can we have a round of applause? My <laughs> gosh, because, uh, you know, as, as all of us know, um, Writing a book is a really, really painful, hard thing to do. Um, my wife is a social worker, and she always likes to kind of accentuate the positive. So when I start talking like this, uh, she gives me her look, and I know, well, a social worker wouldn't say this, but I'm a writer, and I'm, you know, masochistic, as, as has been said. So I'll just say it. So the phrase I use to talk about the writing of a book is the death march. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Um, and I'm glad we're all experienced writers here, so I know I'm not discouraging anybody. But it's hard, right? It's very, very hard. So how do we keep ourselves putting that one foot in front of the other? How do we keep going? Um, now, 
Speaking of sports metaphors, uh, I had one that I was going to that I was going to try out, uh, even though I don't have a lot of experience with these. Not doing the sports guy, but um, we'll see how this goes. So um, there's this guy Tiger Woods, right? Uh, and he plays golf in one of the clubs. Um, and so when when Tiger Woods is not um, at a tournament, would it be or on a tour? Um, how often do you guys think? He's practicing the swing. Every day. Wow, yes, I didn't even have to prompt. Every day. Well, he's obviously the best at what he does. Um, if we want to be the best at what we do, why would we practice any less than he does? Why would we work at it with any less diligence than he does? I highly, 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 highly recommend writing every day, which I know is an easy thing to say. It's hard to do with all the busy lives. But there's, there's some habits you get into when you do that. Um, and it goes back to the short stories or the short uh, you know, articles or whatever it is. There's a, there's a really good habit that you get into when you're doing shorter stuff, and that is you get in the habit of finishing things. And you kind of aren't so happy when you're not finishing things. Um, and that's just a fantastic place to be. And again, my wife would say, well, isn't that sort of, you know, guilt-based? And I say, yeah, yeah, absolutely, but hey, whatever. Whatever keeps those feet going in front of the others. So I, I highly recommend um, writing as close to every day as you can, even if it can just be, you know, uh, half an hour. Because, again, you've got to get to the end, and unless you're Charles Dickens, no one is going to publish your unfinished novel. Um, now, um, a few more tips on keeping those feet one in front of the other, keeping, keeping up the death march. That's another title that was rejected. Keeping up the death march. Uh, <laughs> um, how many people here outline? Okay, like that's about what I would expect. Yeah, because it seems like we, we kind of break down the middle, us writer guys uh, and gals, us writer people. Um, that there's the ones who outline, and then there's the ones who sort of follow the muse. I'm a big believer for myself in outline, and there's a few different uh, benefits that come from that. Now, one is uh, I know where I'm going, and for me that's, that's very important. It's very hard for me to write without knowing where I'm going. But aside from that, once you have that outline down, not only do you know where you're going, you know how close you are to getting there. You have a way to gauge your progress. And you see that you have made progress, which can be a wonderful thing. It's something that helps you keep going. The more you feel like you're moving ahead, the easier it is to keep moving ahead. At least that's been my experience. Um, but again, I know there are people who just aren't into the outline. Uh, so I've got a few other things that I do that maybe maybe you people would relate to more. Um, I have in my office what I call the big board. And the big board is a big board. Um, and a little more specific, it's a big dry erase board. Um, and I, every time I'm about to start uh, a big project, I create a grid on the big board. And down one side will be the weeks, starting with the date that I'm going to start writing and going to the date that I project, usually quite optimistically, that I'm going to finish. And there will be little boxes you know, for each week. The next to that will be chapters. And I'll usually try to do two chapters a week. And the box, you know, those two chapters. And then by that would be word count. And be, I'll be sort of guessing, you know, hoping what my word count is going to be. And as I move through the book, I get to get out my big red marker. I love my big red marker. Because if I've got the top of my big red marker, that means I'm about to X something out. Xing out the dates isn't so satisfying. But um, when I get to X out the chapters, and then when I get to X out the word count, and I can see right there, I just. It, Here's my computer monitor, and I look right there, and look at all those X's. I can see right there that I'm making progress, and that, that helps me, because it's just so easy to feel like you're lost in the wilderness in the middle of the book. They're so big. So but at a glance, you can see where you're at in the book, and that you're actually going somewhere. Now, maybe that doesn't work 